Hello and welcome back to the Houston Texans franchise. We have finally arrived at the offseason after going 7-10 this year, not quite good enough to make the playoffs. But we do have plenty of cap space and three first-round picks to try to make this team better. Let's kick off the offseason, though, by taking a look at a draft story. Matt Miller saying a rivalry developed between wide receiver Malik Hubbard and cornerback Tony Hatchett this year. Hubbard uh, out of Tennessee at 21 years old. He's still young, 6'5", big-bodied receiver. He has great physicals, but when you look at the skill set, an F at medium route running and just a C at short route running tells me all I need to know about Malik Hubbard. Tony Hatchett, an undersized corner out of Utah State. We already have a couple of those, and we're looking for more of a big-bodied corner. He does have a great physical skill set, and skills they're okay see man we don't know the zone but i feel like he's all right but not exactly what we are looking for another draft story right here for left tackle terrell cobb out of oregon having injury concerns after a history of injuries throughout his high school and college career this is a guy i am high on or at least was the injury concerns are kind of a big issue we already have laramie tensel missing all last year getting him back Can we really count on another guy coming in and maybe getting injured i don't know Playoffs, first round has been simmed. Uh, the Patriots, the only higher seed to win. But instead, we're going to take a look at this Titans and Chargers game. Chargers scoring 10 in the fourth quarter to prevail, winning 31-28. Herbert, four touchdowns, 26-34, 76% completion percentage. He was excellent. Tannehill was his game manager self, doing all right. But they just couldn't keep the ball on the field long enough. Uh, I guess the Chargers kind of ran the clock out on them, possessing the ball for... Probably a lot more time. I mean, Eckler with 20 carries and a lot more passes for Herbert. Time to find out who is in the conference championships. It is going to be the Patriots and Steelers and then Panthers Eagles. The only one division winner advanced to the championship games in the New England Patriots. Well, the Browns lost 31-28. They scored 21 in the fourth quarter, but that wasn't enough. The Saints scored 14 in the fourth, but lost 28-21 to Philly. And that sets up our AFC Championship and NFC Championship matchups. Let's take a look at another draft story here. Dwight Devine withdrawing from the combine due to injury. That kind of stinks to see. I was really hoping to see what kind of combine numbers he could put up. He has even slid down the draft board behind his college teammate, Sean Bush, and is now QB3 on that board. The player notes and player traits tell me I still think he's going to be a good quarterback. He is one of the youngest players in the draft, and looking at his physicals, they still look great even though you don't have the exact numbers. Skill set wise, still fine there. I mean, be deep and be short with A awareness. I think he's still going to be a good quarterback. The Super Bowl matchup has been said it will be Steelers and Panthers. Did not see that coming before the year. Steelers won 21 to 16 in a defensive battle. Cam Newton going to get to face his old team after taking down the Patriots, throwing two touchdowns, 20 to 30 for 66% completion percentage. And rookie QB Mac Jones helps lead his team to the conference championship game. The Panthers won 24 17. Uh, the Eagles scored 10 in the fourth, but that wasn't enough. We'll see who ends up winning this Cam Newton Super Bowl. I mean, he gets to face his old team. Pro Bowl roster has been announced. Let's see who we have making the roster. Tristan Hill makes it as the third defensive tackle. I think that's amazing for him. He kind of fell off towards the end of the year, but he was really dominant in the middle stretch. Fairburn makes it as the kicker. I think that's well-deserved. He had the most field goals made, the best accuracy, and the longest field goal in all the NFL. John Hightower made it as the kick returner, despite not getting a chance until late in the season. When he did finally get the opportunity, he did do well. Congratulations to the three guys we had make the Pro Bowl. Let's take a look at the awards around the league. Kyler Murray is your 2021 NFL MVP, despite having a losing record and missing the playoffs. Coach of the year, Mike McCarthy went 14-3, but got bounced in round one of the playoffs. I'm sure Jerry Jones isn't happy with that. John Medlock finished in 10th place, despite having a 7-10 record showcasing how much he is respected for doing what he could with this roster that is subpar. Davis Mills in the Rookie of the Year race in the AFC finishes third. I mean, that's not too surprising behind Trevor Lawrence and Najee Harris. Nico Collins down here in seventh, and Brevin Jordan down there in tenth. All three of the rookies played pretty well. How does Fairburn finish in sixth place and best kicker in the AFC award when he had the longest field goal, the most makes, and the best make percentage? I think Madden just screwed this one up. That doesn't make any sense how they vote on that. Senior Bowl has came and went. We have some draft stories to cover. Jay Franklin was a no-show in the game or the drills. Rakeem Groves, a cornerback out of Oklahoma, was the Senior Bowl MVP. And then Matt Blackwell, an outside linebacker, had rave reviews from everybody that watched him there. Taking a look at Rakeem Groves first. He's a cornerback out of Oklahoma at 6'1", 200 pounds, 22-year-old. He has some decent physicals, and he's a bigger corner. But his man coverage is so bad with a D. His zone's all right. 
might be a corner that we do look at, but not my favorite in this draft. Jay Franklin, a middle linebacker out of Oklahoma as well, first or second round projection, has dropped a little bit in the rankings, does have great physicals, but the skill set, just a bunch of C's, nothing that jumps off at you and tells you that he's actually going to be really good. Matt Blackwell, a linebacker out of Missouri that our GM told us to take a look at at the beginning of the year. Had a pretty good senior day, I guess, and coaches are raving about him. He has all right physicals, but his skill set tells you that he's not worth a second or third round pick, at least from what we're looking at here. Now to move on to the Super Bowl. Who are the Super Bowl champions? It is the Carolina Panthers as they defeat Cam Newton and the Steelers 23-16. And the Super Bowl MVP went to Shaq Thompson. I did not see that coming when we played the Panthers all the way back on that Thursday night game. Look at that. Two safeties in the fourth quarter, one for each team. That is a weird Super Bowl, if I do say so. Sam Darnold is a Super Bowl champion quarterback. Three touchdowns, two picks, 70% completion percentage. Cam Newton had an awful game, two picks. 50% completion percentage, was sacked a bunch of times. Ground game for the Steelers is pretty good, though. 123 from Najee Harris. They just couldn't get the job done. Jack Thompson, the Super Bowl MVP, didn't have a sack, but he did have an interception. Didn't even have a touchdown, though, but I guess he still won Super Bowl MVP. Good for him. Moving on to retirements. George Iloka is going to retire from the league and our team, so we won't be able to bring him back. Mark Ingram also retires. I guess he couldn't handle the toxic environment at the Raiders had going on with John Gruden and the rest of the players. See who they have us taking here in mock draft number three. It looks like Damian Willis, a running back out of Maryland. I don't know about taking a running back at pick five, but that's who they view us taking. And then at pick nine, a strong safety in Darren Hickman. And if we scroll down a little bit more, they have us taking a second strong safety in the first round. We can't really look at what they're telling us we're going to pick because they're completely off. But the white divine falling all the way towards the end of the first round tells us that we could probably wait a second on him if we want to draft him as our quarterback. John Bush also climbing up the rankings. Time to re-sign some players. We'll start with Shaka Tony. Only wants 780k for one year. I mean, this is a slam dunk offer. We will gladly take him back on the team for that low offer. Tristan Hill, we want to keep him around as a situational pass rusher. I don't really think he's great at stopping the run with these ratings, but he's a good pass rusher and a decent third defensive tackle. See if we can get him for a little less than he wants, and he accepts, so he'll be back for one more season at least. Jacoby Stevens is going to get the same offer that Shaka Tony did, and he's going to accept if we keep some of that linebacker depth. Speaking of linebacker depth, Tanner Muse, we want to keep him around. He's got some great speed, and I think he's developing nicely. At least he'll be a good special teams player. We're going to try to get him for two seasons at $3.4 million over the two years, and he accepts we keeping a linebacker depth. More depth that we want to try to bring back. Kenny Robinson at age 23, still a young player. CB accepts a two-year deal for $4.5 million, and he rejects it. We'll have to take another look at him when he gets a free agency. Jalen Samuels, we're going to give him a one-year offer worth $1.5 million. Try to keep him around as running back depth. He declines. Let's try offering Carryon Johnson the exact same deal we just gave Samuels. CB sticks around as a backup running back. He rejects it. So we don't have a running back on the roster at the moment. I don't think we definitely need to address in free agency and the draft. Elijah Wilkinson, I want to keep him around on a one-year deal. He did a good job filling in when he had to for Larry Tunsil. He accepts. We have a backup left tackle slash right tackle. Jordan Miller, I want to keep him around on a one-year deal. We can cut him if he doesn't end up making the team and lose nothing. Off from this $1.75 million with no signing bonus, he accepts. I think that is all the re-signing we're going to be doing with the roster at the moment we'll let the rest of these guys just hit free agency and if we need to bring any of them back we could try to bring them back late in free agency or after the draft i don't think any of them are really worth what they're asking for except for maybe like a john hightower as a return man for now let's move on though we've got to free up some more cap space let's cut eric murray here does not have good coverage at this point in his career and he's not really a great tackler Gonna save us a bunch of money and free up 5.25 million in cap space. But he's gone. Andre Roberts was our return man at the beginning of last year, but he wasn't very good. We put in Hightower and he immediately did better. We're gonna cut him and free up even more cap space. On to free agency. We see the quarterbacks that are available. Jameis Winston is the top one, but we're looking at Taysom Hill. Not as necessarily a starter, but more as like a backup that you could use in multiple roles if you really have to. I don't think $3 million is too much to have to pay Taysom Hill. I mean, we have to outbid the Washington football team anyway. James White, the kind of running back you want to have on your team. Not really an elite speedster, but he's a great pass catcher. 
and could fill in multiple roles. I think four million a season is not too bad, just on a two-year deal. And we're currently the only offer he has, so hopefully he accepts. Because Gareth White right now is the only running back we have. I didn't think we had anybody still there. Jerry Hughes, we need a pass rusher. He is a veteran that could still do it. He offers you a little bit of run-stopping ability as well. One year, 6.5 million, a little less than he's expecting, but we're the only offer, so why not? I know I said I wanted a younger middle linebacker, but Dante Hightower sitting out in free agency is almost too good for us to pass up. And on a two-year, $16 million deal, we're the only offer on the board. He's the perfect guy to come in and slow down Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor, who we have to face twice a season. Another veteran we're targeting on the defense that we want to pick up is Xavier Rhodes, better in zone than man. He's a big body corner that can help slow down the big receivers that we have to face. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see Desmond King up to Superstar and Jimmy Moland up to X Factor. Did not see this coming, but you know, dev traits can progress in the offseason once you hit it. I guess Moreland and Desmond King both did that. And we were looking through the rest of our team and we found one more guy who progressed. That's Kevin Pierre Lewis. He went up to star devs so or defense. Probably going to look a little bit better, at least development wise, next season. The last guy we're going to target in free agency here in free agency period one is Jerron Curse. Big safety that can cover and tackle well. It's a cheap deal, a one year offer. We'll see if we sign him or any of the free agents we just offered. Time to look at the combine results. You'll see Sean Bush has passed Divine because he had to miss the combine. Kevin Wade only has good throw power, not the best 40 yard dash speed, but still has the best skills when it comes to throwing the ball. He'll probably QB one when it comes to that. Divine has good throw power, elite speed. We don't know the exact numbers. His accuracy is still pretty solid. I think he's still my QB two, at least when it comes to accuracy. Maybe QB one when it comes to traits. Andrew Rankin has elite throw power, but probably still a project quarterback. Damian Willis had the best combine of all the running backs in this draft. A 4 3 6 40, a 32 rep bench press. Absolutely incredible. He has shot way up my board. Might be worth a first round pick, at least in my opinion. I mean, we need a running back really badly on this team. Darren Conway, probably running back two now, at least in my opinion. 4 4 1 40 yard dash speed. Not the best bench press, but he was FCS player of the year. I still like him. Eric Hauser didn't have a great combine. He won the Heisman, though. Still has good route running. I think he's still going to be a playmaker for whatever team ends up taking him. We do need a receiver on the outside. Justin Childers at the second best 40 yard dash time of all the receivers in this draft. Has decent route running when it comes to medium and good release. Good juke move. Might be a good player to target in the middle to late rounds. Earl Henning had a fantastic combine all around. Looks like he's probably going to be the best tight end in this draft class. And he's only slipped on the draft board for some reason. Sheldon Dillon had the best bench press. I mean, we are looking for a run blocking tight end that we could take maybe late in the draft. Maybe Sheldon Dillon is that guy. He does have B pass block. So you'd hope he has some good run blocking as well. Matthew Duckworth didn't have the best combine. He has some decent skills, but I don't know if he's necessarily worth a high first round pick. Terrell Cobb has slid down the draft board. Not only with a mediocre combine, but also having injury history reports that are not in his favor. I would like to address the offensive line at some point in this draft, though. Anthony Martin looks like he's all right. Maybe a third round pick might be worth it. I really like this center class a lot. Kevin Mobley had a pretty good combine. His skills look pretty good. But Middleton had a better combine with 37 reps on the bench press. And his skills look the same, if not better, with a pass block finesse and a run block power. Even a good pass block power, probably worth a second round pick. Alan Katz had the best bench press of all the right guards with 36 reps. We have the number five pick. We might be targeting an offensive lineman at pick number five if we stay there. Moving on to right tackle, Marco McCune had a pretty well-rounded combine. He has slid down the draft board for some reason, even though his skill set looks good. And he had a good combine. I mean, I'd take him in the second round if he's available. Rashawn Vick had the best bench press of all the defensive tackles and a third best 40-yard dash time. He is projected first or second round. I'd expect him to go round one. Adam Wiener, the fan favorite prospect in this draft, had a fantastic combine. I mean, well-rounded everywhere. Not the best 40-yard dash time, but looks like the skill set and physicals tell you he could do multiple things well. Ezekiel Mills had the best bench press and the fifth best 40-yard dash time to go along with the rest of his pretty solid combine. His skill set looks well-rounded with B-awareness, B-man, and B-tackle. I think he's definitely worth a third or fourth round pick moving up my linebacker rankings. Speaking of moving up the rankings, Michael Barr has moved up to my cornerback number one with the best 40-yard dash time and the second best bench press. 
to go along with that 6-2 frame at the age of 21. I think he has to be cornerback one on our list. I will gladly take him with a first-round pick if we get the opportunity to, which we should. Johnny Stoudemire, probably cornerback three in this draft class with a 4 3 8 40. Decent man. We don't know the zone, but he's going to make plays with that A catching and B press. The last player's combat results that we'll take a look at, Dwayne Crisp had the best bench press and the fourth best 40-yard dash time of all the strong safeties, which is good because that speed can make up for some poor coverage if he ends up having it. But I think for now, we'll move on from these common results and take a look at what free agents we signed. We see we got James White, Jerron Curse, and Jerry Hughes to all accept. Taysom Hill did reject us. We're going to be putting out some more offers, starting with Patrick Ricard on a two-year deal for $4 million. I think that's a fair offer for the best fullback in football, at least one of them, Kyle Huszczyk, obviously being up there. We still have our offers out for Dante Hightower and Xavier Rhodes. We see Devontae Adams only has one offer on the table from the New York Jets. I think we should throw our hat in the ring and see if we can get Devontae Adams and we can still use an outside receiver. We have the cap space. He'd be a true number one next to Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins. The skill set's good. I mean, he can play him with any quarterback. I think he's quarterback proof. And this team does need a new number one receiver. I think Brandon Cooks is better as a slot. And we see that Devontae Adams did accept. So did Dante Hightower and Kenny Robinson Jr. So Devontae Adams, just like that, is now a member of the Houston Texans on a $100 million deal over five seasons. Dante Hightower going to help make our defense a lot better. I think we've done a good job in free agency, and we kept Kenny Robinson around for the depth that we need at the safety position. Matt Skura here going to get an offer along with a couple of these other guys that we'll just throw out there and see if we can get them on some cheap contracts for just one season. Involved Joseph getting a little bit more money at almost $3 million over one season because we kind of need a run stuff up the middle that could play alongside Ross Blacklock. Time to do some private workouts. Michael Barr, I think he's an obvious choice. We want to try to find out what the coverage skills are exactly like. Damian Willis is another one we want to take a look at. I mean, I think he's worth a first-round pick, but I want to be sure. And how about Alan Katz? I mean, he's projected top five. Now, slipping down to just round one. Let's see if there's any concerns with him. Let's take a look at the last of our signings here in free agency. Patrick Ricard does sign with us on that two-year, $4 million deal. Matt Skura, a depth piece at center on a one-year cheap deal. I think that's good with me. Linval Joseph going to come onto the team and help provide some more run-stuffing defense that we desperately needed. Jameis Winston decided to go to the Colts, so he's in our division, and the Colts replaced Wentz with Winston. Marcus Mariota going to go to the Washington football team. Trubisky to the Steelers. Reset also to the football team along with Josh Rosen and Taysom Hill. I don't know how much sense it makes signing four quarterbacks in free agency or why any of them would want to go to the team that is trying to sign four quarterbacks. That doesn't make any sense. RG3 a bit down the list. He's going to go to the Eagles, so he's sticking around the league. Raheem Mostert going to also go to the Colts. And that one-two punch now with Jonathan Taylor and him is probably the best running back duo in all the football. It's probably not even close. Christian Kirk to the Colts. They just keep on adding. They're also getting Russell Gage. So that offense for the Colts is completely different and it should be exciting to face them. Deron Armstead going to the Dolphins to protect Tua or whoever is their quarterback. Then Wyatt Teller going to go to the Raiders. They needed a right guard to place Richie Incognito. Randy Gregory signing in the division going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, pressuring whoever we have at quarterback. They also signed Casey Hayward to try to make that defense better. I mean, they have to try to defend Derek Henry, Jonathan Taylor, and that Colts offense. And now our offense looking a little bit better with the acquisition of Devontae Adams. The last mock draft has been released, and they have us taking Addison Milton at pick five. So I don't know how much stock I put into what they have us doing, but Kevin Wade sliding down the draft a little bit. They have us taking two strong safeties still. Eric Hauser, the Heisman winner in the teens. Michael Barr down here at pick 19, who I definitely want on the team. Damian Willis going at the end of the first round along with Dwight Devine. With free agency behind us, I think it's about time we get to the NFL draft where we have three first round picks. Without further ado, here we go. The Vikings are going to be on the clock first. After having the worst record in all of football, they go Jose Trailer, a defensive end. No surprise here. They pair him with Daniel Hunter. I think that's a good pick. The Eagles made the NFC Championship game. This is the Dolphins pick they're using. And they go Joe Nix. He was the number two corner on my board. The Raiders, after getting out of the John Gruden era for the second time, they go Nate Love, pass rusher out of Texas. I think that's not the best pick here at pick three. And the Ravens go Eddie McQueen. So no surprises so far in this draft. But we are on the clock here at pick number five. I think we're actually going to look at trading this one. I don't think there's somebody I absolutely want to take at pick five. I'd rather get an extra pick later in this draft so we're not going to trade with the Jets 
The Jaguars are in division. This Falcons one looks like the perfect trade, though we get a second round pick in this year's draft, and we only drop back to pick 11. So we're going to do that. Who are the Falcons trading up to get? They go with Kevin Wade. So the first quarterback is off the board here at pick five as the Falcons trade up to go and get him. And they have their future quarterback to replace Matt Ryan. Washington football team goes with Alan Katz. They need a right guard, I guess, to protect all those quarterbacks they just signed in free agency. And Matthew Duckworth going to the Jets at pick seven. They got to protect Zach Wilson after he was sacked a bunch last season. Jaguars are going to go with a defensive tackle, Corey Duvall. Goes to Duvall, and they got to try to slow down this run game from the Colts and Titans, and that puts us on the clock. I don't think we're going to end up trading this one after Kevin Wade went. We were looking at the quarterback position. We didn't address it in free agency. White Fine sitting out here. It might be a little early for where he was projected to go, but his player traits tell me he's going to be really good. He is the youngest quarterback that I've seen in this draft at age 21. And then if you go to the physicals, I mean, we didn't see the combine numbers, but he has good throw power, elite playmaking ability. His accuracies are both really good for short and deep. Dwight Devine is the selection and he is normal dev. I was really open for hidden dev here. He does have a good throw power and the athletic ratings look pretty incredible. He only has normal dev. I guess we'll have to try to get him up to star and superstar by getting rookie of the year and some awards. I'm still okay with the selection though, if the ratings turn out to be where they're supposed to be. Daryl Bird goes off the board and we are back on the clock here at pick 11. We're looking at Michael Barr, Damian Willis, but might be a little early for both of them. And we just reached maybe a little bit for Divine. So we're looking at trading maybe this pick and getting more picks in this draft. But all these are for future first round picks, except for this Tampa Bay one, which might be a little too far of a drop back for where I want to be. When we go back to Damian Willis, we see the skills. We don't know exactly what they are thanks to the private workout glitching out. Thanks, Madden. We know the physicals are pretty good, though. He ran even better at the pro day. I think we are going to go with Damian Willis. I'm pretty sold on him. So let's make him our selection. And he is hidden dev at 93 speed, 95 excel. Everything looks fantastic. We don't know the actual ratings, but he is hidden dev, a running back that we desperately need. I'm glad we took him. And at pick 12, after taking a quarterback and a running back, we are going to try to trade back again. We do have this Bills offer, which is... Dropping back to 16, we still stay in front of the Buccaneers. I think we're going to take this. We get some more picks in this draft. Who do the Bills trade up to get? They go Kevin Shepard. So another corner off the board, which I don't like seeing because the next guy we want is a corner. Michael Kinney goes, and then Johnny Stoudemire goes to pick right before us to the Dolphins. He was my cornerback three, and we are on the clock. I think this choice is obvious. Michael Barr ran even better at his pro day with a 427. Fantastic combine. The skills don't know exactly what his zone coverage is, but at 6'2", I like a lot of things about him. So I think we're going to make Michael Barr a member of the Houston Texans. He is going to be our selection, and he's hidden dev, our second of this draft. 95 speed, 93 change of direction. Great ratings there in the athletic department at 6'2", 21 years old. I have high hopes for him. I think we just made the right choice. So two hidden dev guys here in the first round, and we traded back a couple of times. Sean Bush goes the pick after us to the Buccaneers or a couple after us. The Buccaneers going with a quarterback to replace Tom Brady down the line. We'll see how Sean Bush ends up turning out. The Bengals go with Rakeem Grove, so another cornerback off the board. The Titans go over Sean Vick. Have to try to stop all the ground games that are improving in our division with Jonathan Taylor and Raheem Mostert on the Colts. And then our pick with Damian Willis, so they got to stop the run game. Chiefs go Eric Hauser. They get a Heisman winner on that insane offense already. Jets going with another offensive lineman. Packers go Thomas Barron. They're not going at receivers, even though they lost Devontae Adams in free agency. Cowboys go Darren Hickman. Marshall Elliott off the board to the Lions. We need a lot of help. And then moving forward in the first round, Chad Beasley to the Saints at pick 28, 29. It's Marco McCune. I expected him to go a little later. He ends up going at the end of the first round to the Eagles. We made some good picks. In the first round, the Panthers, the Super Bowl champions, go Jay Franklin. And the Vikings start off the second round with a running back, Jeremiah Younger. And the Dolphins make it back-to-back -back running backs going with Cedric Robertson. And then the Raiders, a third straight running back. It's Cordell Truman out of Cincinnati. They continue to run off the board. Ty Banza, a fourth straight running back to the Ravens. And the Giants finally end that going Terrell Cobb. I expected him to go maybe a little later, but there he goes. He's going to get a chance to protect Deshaun Watson. Jordan Jarrett going to the Jaguars. He's in our division. Tony Hatchett. 
We saw a draft story about him. He goes to the Bears here in the second round. The Lions take Brian Gonzalez. That might have been a reach. He is the fourth quarterback to go in this draft. Falcons go Josh Pleasant, and we are on the board here in round two at pick 12. And we're looking at offensive line help, looking at all these centers. Addison Middleton is the second center on the board. He had the best combine and pro day of all the centers. The skills look great. I mean, I don't see how we can go wrong with this pick. So I think we're going to do it. Addison Middleton is normal dev. I was really expecting him to be hidden dev of all the players we've taken. 90 strength. Hopefully he at least has some good ratings. Wow. Matt Blackwell goes to pick after us to the Broncos. So that means he's probably going to end up being the next Von Miller. The Bills go with a quarterback here in Dalton Calcaterra. Got to help out Josh Allen. I mean, with all the injuries he had last year, they needed a good backup. Chad Richards going to the Colts. Darren Conway to the Buccaneers. That's an interesting one. An FCS player of the year going there. Chris Woodard to the Bengals. And we are on the clock again here in the second round. We are looking at defense. Jaden Rhodes, an outside linebacker. He's the top one on the board. But his scouting report, I don't know about him. Adam Weiner, on the other hand, he's a fan favorite. A, a better combine, at least all around. He has a good combination of block, shed, power move, and play rack. So at worst, I could see him being a situational pass rusher. But he could also be an outside linebacker in the 4-3. He is our pick, and he is hidden dev. We get another one on defense. I'm glad that have on our team instead of be facing him. Moving on and later into the second round, Charlie Bauer goes to the Cowboys, one of the centers we were looking at. And then the other one, Kevin Mobley to the Giants, so another offensive lineman to help protect Sean Watson. Anthony Martin goes to the Raiders at left tackle. That was a guy I was kind of targeting, but he went there. Justin Childers, the second fastest receiver in this draft, goes to the Jaguars. He's in our division. On moving forward, Mac Mayweather to the Falcons, and we are on the clock here in the third round. We do need more defensive help. We're looking at Ezekiel Mills. He did have a good 40-yard dash, a good bench press. He looks like he has a well-rounded skill set, but he's projected third or fourth round. We did just take a linebacker. How about Dwayne Crisp then? I mean, he has a good bench press, a good 40-yard dash time. We don't know his coverage skills, but with that speed, he could make up for some poor coverage, and we already know he's a good tackler. So I think we should probably lean Dwayne Crisp, considering we did just take a linebacker. So let's make him our pick. Dwayne Crisp is hitting Dev, our third one on defense. And now we have Crisp, R. Wiener, all on the defense with Hidden Dev. I mean, that is fantastic names and fantastic players. Moving forward in the draft, Mike Gore goes to the Cardinals and Ricky Thomas to the 49ers. And we're on the clock again here in the third round. We're still looking at defense. And we almost drafted Jaden Rhodes earlier. He does have a good 40-yard dash time, but I think Ezekiel Mills might be just better. He has a similar 40-yard dash time and a better bench press. So let's make Ezekiel Mills our second pick of the third round, and he is normal dev, dang it. He has good speed, though, so at least he's going to be a good special teamer. And we add more to this defense. Jaden Rhodes is going to go in the third round to the Browns at pick 27, so we'll take a look at him after the draft and see how good he is. Andrew Rankin goes to the defending Super Bowl champion. I guess he'll be a backup there behind Sam Darnold and see how he develops. Greg Quigley, a guy I was high on, goes to the Colts. That's a shame. Really wanted him. Martin Guerrero to the Cowboys, and we are on the clock here in the fourth round. Maybe we should take another offensive lineman. J.B. Nash had a pretty good combine, but his lead block and run blocking don't look like they're that good. And I like George Page a little bit more. He's a potential undrafted free agent, so you could probably wait a little bit to get him. We are only in the fourth round. So how about Martin Boyce? He has a good combine with bench press and 40-yard dash combination there. That's great. He blocks at C awareness. I don't know. Maybe we should just take Martin Boyce. I think we should make him our pick. And he's hidden dev. Was not actually expecting that. 85 strength, 75 speed. Somebody you could definitely develop for a year behind Linval Joseph. We'll take that. And George Page goes to the pick before us here in the fifth round. Wow. He was a potential undrafted guy and he goes in the fifth round. We're moving on from offensive line. I think we'll just take Kevin Smart here. He has some good hands, some good run block. The F awareness is bad, but we do need depth at receiver. So let's make up the pick here, and he's just normal dev. Decent speed and jumping. It's a big 6'4 receiver, so I guess we'll take him there. Dante Patterson, now we're in the seventh round. Didn't have the greatest combine, but it's still pretty solid, and he's well-rounded. Let's just make him our pick here and see what he ends up being. And he's just normal dev. 91 speed, 91 agility, acceleration. Not too bad, but not elite change of direction. That would have been our last pick in the draft. We're going to trade... 
Charlie Hack here to the Broncos and get another seventh round pick because we want to take a couple more players. So we're probably going to do it again. We're going to take Sheldon Dillon at the best bench press. His skills, uh, he has good pass blocking. We'll make him our pick in the seventh round, our second one. And he's just normal dev. That's fine. Decent strength. We'll see what his ratings look like. And one more trade. We want one more player in this draft. Lonnie Johnson going to the Seahawks to back up Jamal Adams. And the final selection of our draft is going to be Jason Lashley. Good hands, good route running for our running back. Doesn't have the best combine, but I still want him on our team. As somebody can develop, and he's normal dev, that's fine. Not the best speed, but we want to know the ratings, what his hands and route running are like. Time to find out all the ratings of our draft picks. Dwight Devine is a 74 overall. I mean, he has good accuracies across the board. I'm actually better with the pick than I thought I'd be. He's only normal dev, but I like what I see, though. Good speed, good change of direction. He's going to be mobile. I think we just found our franchise quarterback. We'll see how he ends up playing in the preseason and practice. Damian Willis, hidden dev, running back that we took with our second pick in the first round. I mean, that elite athleticism, really well-rounded. His catching's better than I thought it would be. He needs to work on the route running a bit. His pass blocking is fine. That's a good selection. Michael Barr, what do the coverage ratings look like? Both 72. I mean, they're down a little bit right the second. I think that's good, though. I mean... 95 speed at six foot two with 72 coverages. That's, that's great. 81 catching is better than I thought it'd be. I think we found ourselves an elite playmaker in the secondary. Wow. Michael Barr. What about some of our other picks? Let's take a look at Addison Middleton, normal dev, 69 overall. I mean, the ratings look pretty solid. 90 strength. I, I still think he's going to be a good player, but not exactly what I thought he would end up being. Adam Weiner, the hidden dev, outside linebacker, fan favorite. Not too bad. Good finesse move, good block shot, good power move. He is well-rounded. He cannot cover, though. We're probably more of an edge rusher. We're going to probably play him in multiple roles, though, and use him as a bunch of different things. I think that's what his best option is and the best option for us. Dwayne Crisp ended up being a 76 overall. His coverage is not that great, but it's decent enough that you can work on it, and it'll be good eventually. Good speed, good awareness. I mean, yeah, he's a great player, I think. Could start day one if you really wanted to. I guess we'll see how he plays in the preseason. I mean, we do have Jerron Curse. Ezekiel Mills is a 73 overall, and he has better strength, coverage, tackling, and everything that I thought he would have. The only thing he's missing really is the hidden dev. I think Ezekiel Mills is a good pick with where we got him. I mean, just wish he was hidden dev. Martin Boyce did get the hidden dev, 67 overall, decent strength. Block shed's fine. He's going to take one year to learn behind Linval Joseph which I think will do him wonders. They could fill in nicely the next season. Yeah, not bad. Kevin Smart, normal dev, 68 overall, does have good hands. The route running, not that good over the middle, but short and deep, pretty solid. And I think he'll be a good depth piece that we could use if we have injury issues or have some fatigue issues. Dante Patterson, a 66 overall. The coverage is a lot worse than I thought it would be. It's unfortunate, but I guess he can at least be developmental guy either on the practice squad or at the end of our roster sheldon dylan now this one's disappointing only a 60 overall 57 run block i was expecting that to be a lot better and that's yeah that's probably a miss there what about our other seventh round pick eh, it's kind of a miss 62 overall what about his catching and route running we'll take a look at that in a second 85 speed yep 72 catching at 69 short route running that's not too bad but probably not as good as i thought he would be how about we take a look around the league at some of the other selections. Jose Trailer, the number one overall pick, 74 overall hidden dev, good finesse move, decent block shed, good speed. He should pair well with Daniil Hunter. Number two pick, Joe Nix, is also hidden dev, 77 overall, better zone than man, 90 speed, uh, terrible hands though. Nate Love, ooh, that's kind of tough. A normal dev guy with the number three pick. Not too bad though. He's rated pretty well around. I mean, I don't think anything's too bad. Eddie McQueen also ended up being normal dev. He does have some pretty good finesse move and block shed and speed, but normal dev kind of stings. Kevin Wade also ended up being normal dev, so we didn't miss out there. And the short accuracy, not quite as good as Divine. I mean, we'll compare the two later. I think he's still pretty good, but I think we did get the better of the two in Dwight Divine. Let's keep moving on and look at the next guy. That's going to be Corey Duvall. And he's not too bad, but he's normal dev, so that's kind of a shame for the Jaguars. Johnny Stoudemire, I thought he would definitely have hidden dev with the draft story, the good combine, everything was pointing to him having hidden dev, but he just didn't. Wow, Sean Bush was the quarterback that got the hidden dev. I was really not expecting that. 
me. I kind of narrowed in on Divine and Wade. They were the top two. I thought it was pretty obvious, but I guess Sean Bush ended up being better than I gave him credit for. Did he get to go do the backup for Tom Brady? We'll see how he ends up developing throughout our series. Sean Vick to the Titans, another tough defensive tackle in the division. They got to gear up with a good run game. And he's all right, just normal dev. Eric Hauser has hidden dev though. 73 overall is some decent route running and decent speed. He should be a good player. Pair well with Travis Kelsey and Tariq Hill. Terrell Cobb still got to be hidden dev and he looks like he's a pretty good player. Hopefully his injury issues don't end up causing too many problems and he should be able to protect uh, Sean Watson there. Brian Gonzalez ended up being a reach for the Lions. Just a 60 overall and normal dev. Surprisingly, Matt Blackwell was also normal dev. His ratings are all right, but he's not as good a pass rusher as I thought he would be. Darren Conway is only normal dev. That's a shame. I always thought he'd be better. He's still not too bad at 69 overall. Wow, I guess we took the wrong center. Charlie Bauer, hidden dev, 75 overall. He does have lower strength, but he's a better player. Another hidden dev lineman we missed out on, Elijah Kyle. Looks like he's going to be good for the Rams. Really took the worst center of the three. Kevin Mobley, hidden dev, 75 overall as well. I just didn't think with the better combat, we saw Addison Milton's ratings. He looked like he'd be really good. Anthony Martin here, also hidden dev. So that is four hidden dev offensive linemen we really passed on. Justin Childress going to the Jaguars, only normal dev. Antoine Knighton even had a hidden dev and it was 75 overall. How is he better than Addison Middleton? That just didn't make any sense to me. At least we passed on Jaden Rose. He does not look very good. 63 overall, normal dev. Dodged a bolt with that one. Same thing with Andrew Rankin. 61 overall, normal dev. Only three better throw power than the quarterback we took in Divine. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Take that. Right Quigley ended up being hidden dev 70 overall. His run block's not that good, but definitely somebody can work on. And now he's in our division. We took Martin Boyce right before Jamie Nash went, and he ended up being hidden dev 70 overall. And he has pretty good ratings. I think he could honestly start day one. Earl Henning, we knew he'd be the best tight end in the draft. He goes to the Dolphins, has decent run block. Looks like he's going to be a good player. Unfortunately, we just didn't have the pick to end up taking him. Ryan Rowland, a defensive end we looked at in later rounds. He ended up going to the Jaguars, and he's hidden dev, but he needs a lot of work. So does D'Angelo McKinney, who also ended up in division with the Titans. Two guys we looked at early in the draft process. George Page, the pick before us, went to the Eagles. Doesn't have a good run block, but he's hidden dev, and we missed on him. Kevin Smart went the pick after him, and that's kind of why we took him. Andre Peterson goes to the Chiefs, 68 overall, and another hidden dev line we missed out on, so we missed out on a bunch of them. Looking at the overall leaders, I guess, in this draft, Cedric Robertson ended up having the highest overall at 78, but he's just normal dev. Jeremiah Younger down here, also 78 overall. He is hidden dev, and he's going to be the backup or third string to Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison which kind of sucks because he's just going to be stuck behind those two and will never really get a chance to play. Hopefully he does at some point though. Damian Willis tied for second, I guess at 77 overall. How about speed? Michael Barr, 95 speed has a tie for the fastest player with Johnny Stoudemire. Damian Willis also on the list down there. Comparing Dwight Devine and Kevin Wade, you'll see they have the same throw power. Devine has the better short accuracy by three, whereas Wade has the better medium and deep. I think it just came down to Dwight Devine having the better mobility. That's why I wanted him over Wade in the end. I want you guys tell me your thoughts down below and what you thought of our offseason and the draft. Next time we'll have the preseason and showcase all of our new players. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.